Welcome to HQ Live. I'm Vicki Hoth and today joining me is Debbie Brown. She's one of our national educators for Handy Quilter. Debbie, welcome. I, I'm so glad to be here. I know you have something really amazing to teach and it's like aha moment for me. Oh good. So let's get started, okay? Okay. I love teaching on the Simply 16 and with the little buddy so many people are happy because that turns it into... So what's the little buddy? The little buddy is a pole system that's added to the little foot frame, but it has limits. You can only quilt something up to 40, 45 inches wide on okay, it. Okay, let's explain then what the little foot is. Well, the little foot frame is about, it's five feet wide, and you can quilt any size quilt on it. You're going to quilt it in sections. You're going to basically hoop your quilt on this five foot frame and quilt what's within that area. Once you're finished with this, you unhook the quilt and move it over. So you can quilt a great big quilt on that quilt. Um, and between the little buddy and the little foot frame, you can quilt any size quilt, and doing it this way is actually gonna make it easier. Okay, so on the little, on the little foot, I'm going, oh, on the little foot, you prepare your quilt how? Your sandwich, you have to make a quilt sandwich. I do, I piece my entire front and my backing and my batting, and I layer them, base them together. Um, the problem with that not that it's a problem, but it's a little uncomfortable, a little pain point. It's when you have a king size quilt and you're trying to quilt right in the middle of it and you have 50 inches on the right and 50 inches on the left and 50 inches on the top and on the bottom. That becomes the problem because you have to manage all of that extra bulk all the way around. Right, right. Um, so I know everyone was tickled when the little buddy came out because it adds rollers to it and you don't have to manipulate mm -hmm. that, that large quilt, but then you can't Right, Do. because it's only five feet. Right. So you're going to show what? How to quilt it in sections. So you can start in part of your quilt and quilt the middle part or the side part on the little buddy and then add in more fabric and quilt it on the little foot frame. Okay, so you have both. Yes, it's the best of both worlds together. All right, because I think there's quite a bit of, uh, it's a difference. It is. Very much a different way of even the piecing part. Yes, you do have to change the way you piece your quilt top. Okay, so can every quilt that I choose to do... I'm going to say most. Most. Okay, so I'm let's gonna get say started. Most. So you've got some examples. I do. Um, I have a pattern here, and this pattern's 38 by 48 inches. If I were trying to quilt this on my little buddy, I wouldn't put the 48 inches going sideways because that's larger than the quilting area okay. on the little buddy. So as long as I have the 38 inches going up going and down, I'm fine. So this quilt's perfect just the way it is. So that length and the little buddy allows you to put your backing on the pole, and we'll get to that. We'll show you how that works. It's really awesome. Um, so you can, uh, you put it all on there. So I would put it that this is the top of my quilt, and I would quilt from the top to the bottom. These are the sides, and I don't need to do anything special. So this is a quilt that you can quilt on a little bunny without any planning whatsoever. Okay. Okay. Then I have another quilt. This quilt is 52 by 60 inches. And Too while good. it will filt, it will fit on the frame, the needle doesn't reach all points of this quilt. Okay, right, because you lose six inches on each side. Exactly. For, because of your carriage. Right, so what I would do is I would probably piece the whole quilt, let me get my pen. So I would piece the whole quilt here and just not add on that border. So the whole quilt, let's go back here, the whole quilt measurement was? Let's go back, 52 inches. So by taking off probably a four or five inch border, you're really bringing it down to work. Correct. Okay, so you're gonna so look at the sizes. the top mm -hmm. and the back, okay. Uh, so let's see, this is, uh, a si this is a six inch border. So it takes this quilt down to 46 inches. If you're nervous about that, I would take off the other border as well. Oh, okay. So I would just piece the center, 
the top border and the bottom border, mm -hmm. quilt that up, and then, then I'll show you how I add the fabric on and then finish quilting it later. Okay. So, so this one's pretty straightforward. No extra, you don't have to cut anything different, just don't put your, your side borders on first. Okay, because I can see a lot of questions, I can already feel a lot of questions going on uh, with our customers, with our uh, viewers, like, wait, wait, what about the batting? What about the backing? Right. You have all of that figured out. I do. Okay, let's do it. So here's okay. another quilt, um, this quilt. This quilt is 64 by 64. So too it's big. not, it's mm -hmm. too big. So taking that in thirds here, that's going to take off 20 inches. Okay. Um, 21 but, inches. But, so that's going to take it to 40, 42. Okay, but I'm seeing, I'm seeing that this border here goes all the way in one piece. Correct. So when I piece it, I'm actually going to cut that border. So I'm going to piece these six blocks together and put the border on three sides. And then I'm going to piece these three blocks together and put borders on those three sides. I'm going to quilt this section first on the little buddy. This section. Correct. I'm going to quilt the larger section okay. on the little buddy. I'm going to, um, I will put the backing on with four or five inches on the left, four or five inches on the right. Mm -hmm. I'll put the batting on four or five inches on the left, four or five Excess. inches on the right. Correct. I want more. And then I will put the top on and I will quilt that up using my little buddy and I will quilt that whole section. Okay. And when I'm done, I will add this section on and continue quilting. The adding on is... That's what I'm going to show you. Okay, all right. Okay. Now, these are... Uh, here's one that is a little more difficult. So if I were to take this quilt and say, uh, this quilt is... I believe this is 45 inches right here. Okay. So that's max. But what if I want to cut it here? If I say 45 inches is a little scary. I want to cut it on this block. Can you see that that block oh. isn't matching up mm -hmm. with the border? So I have this 45 inch section in the middle. And if that's feeling a little like it might just be too close to being the largest I right. want to quilt and want to take one block off, if I, if I cut, if I piece the quilt over to here and try to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my quilt with this line going straight up and down, there's not a seam in the border. It's a pieced border that doesn't match up with the blocks. So this one's going to be a little harder to do. Can show us how to do it? What I would probably do is I would work and make those 45 inches work. I would piece the entire quilt here. Like that. I would piece the entire 45 inch section, but I might stop my quilting somewhere over here and somewhere over here, and we can pick that quilting up later. Okay. And that way it will work better with the piecing. Well, and it, something like this, these blocks might have their own individual quilting and it wouldn't be, if you're not doing an edge to edge type quilting, then you can fussy exactly. quilt each piece. Exactly, because it will fit on the frame, it just won't fit in the sewing space. Right. So, would you put this these borders on then? I would, because I only want to add a, um, the sides. I, w I want to quilt as much on that little buddy as possible. Okay. And for okay. those of you who've quilted on the little buddy, you agree with me. It's, it's wonderful. You just start at the top and work your way to the bottom. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, these are all reasonably small quilts. Right. But what about a really big quilt? Oh, exactly. So I have a much bigger quilt. This is 80 inches by 92. I never go, oh. Right. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've always been putting the long angle going up and down, the long direction mm -hmm. of a quilt the going up and down, because that's the easy part to do that on the little right, buddy. Right. Uh, so here, this is 80 inches across, and these are 8 inch blocks and 4 inch blocks. Uh, so if, let's see, 8 and 4 and 8 and 4, I've got to do some math here. So 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. I can do... This smart with her math. <laughs> this part right there. Uh, only sometimes. <laughs> I, I'm counting on my right. fingers under the table. Uh, so I would probably piece this part here and then add on this side and this side at the end. Okay. Or you can say I'm going to do what? 8, so that's 12, 24, 36, and maybe go up to here. This is 42 here and just do it in two. So you only have to join one piece on later. So I would stitch the left half 
quilt all of that, then add on a larger right half. Okay. And you get to decide what's easiest for you. Do you prefer, and it also depends on your quilting patterns. Whenever I'm working with borders, I like to add the both borders because those are sometimes quilted differently. So that's a really natural uh, division point on right. a quilt. But this, you really have to decide on how you're going to quilt it. Either way will work. So with this quilt, the borders are all pieced, so you don't have to worry about deciding I'm going to put a seam someplace Correct. in the border. Correct. There, are, there are lots of seams. There are no borders on this quilt. There are blocks and sashings. They're just all the same color. Right, so it makes it look like a border. Correct. Okay. Uh, you could even, with the way the borders are pieced here, you could say I'll stitch it and cut it in the opposite direction. I okay. wouldn't do that. Why? Because I like to have the long direction coming first. I was going to ask you that. So that's, that's it's why always you easiest. You always want the mm. longest. You get the most quilting. I make the best use of the little buddy and of your time too. Yes. 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 Let's just do the fun part for as long as we can, and right. then and then make it work. Now wait a minute. You're saying that other part that we have to attach everything together is not fun. Everyone has a different version of fun, <laughs> but but it's going to make it work. Oh, it'll work just great. It really will because we're going to quilt it on the little foot frame. So it's just like quilting on the little qu foot frame normally, but I really like when I can put it on the bars and roll it uh, because there's just no thought. You start at the top, you work to the bottom, right. there's no repositioning, there's no manipulating. So I would not choose probably to do a, an edge to edge with a panograph or something no. like that because you would have to try and marry those up to make a match. This way you're just going to do your free motion quilting. I'm going to do my free motion quilting and it could be custom quilting. I True. could do ruler quilting. I could do block by block. Because this one right here, I would love to do some quilt in the block, each block defined separately. Definitely, and something really nice in the sashings. This quilt can be quilted to make you cry. Stitch in the ditch, it, all of those All things. of it. You can totally do all of that. Now, the quilts that I wouldn't necessarily do this with, I wouldn't necessarily do this with quilts that are made up of angles, diamonds, that you can't hexagons. cut in half. I can't cut or in like half. Or like a double wedding ring quilt. With that curves. Would, yeah. Correct. Okay. So that you, I will say this will work on most quilts, probably not all of them, but if I can take most of my quilts and make them work with the little buddy and, yes. and bring the little buddy into more of my quilts, I know it's going to make, it, it makes me happier and I know it's going to make our quilters happier. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So what's next? So what's next is to take a quilt, which I've done. Okay. And I've quilted it on the little buddy and I'm going to show you what to do from there on. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Well, Debbie, we have the quilt already quilted, but you've t and you've taken it off. You have to take it off the frame, right? The little foot to do this, right? Now what? I so this was all quilted on the little buddy. I used 45 inches of backing, which fit on there perfectly, and my quilt here, I think it was 40, 42 inches, something like that. So it fit on there beautifully. Just quilted it from top and bottom, including the top and bottom borders. Okay. Uh, normally, I piece my top and bottom borders on last. Right. But this time I switched that around. I changed how I pieced it a little bit uh, because I have my long seams going up and down the quilt now. Okay. And I can live with that to get most of my quilt on that little buddy. Right. That's, that's a change, a trade-off I'm willing and to make. And it's such a busy print, you're not, you're not going to see. The seam doesn't matter. Yeah. No. Um, so I have extra backing, I have extra batting, and I have my, my borders ready to add on to this quilt. So I have to prepare the quilt and sew this on. Okay. What I'm going to do is trim right with the edge of my fabric because that's a quarter inch seam. So I want to make this just like I'm piecing my quilt. I want to take it back yeah. to that quarter inch seam. So if this were pieced, I would have that quarter inch seam. This just happens to be a solid border. Okay. So when I'm quilting the body of this, I want to make sure that I do I leave a little, I don't quilt right up to the edge? It depends on how you're going to quilt your quilt. If I had quilted this, this inner border, in a separate pattern, I could have quilted the whole thing very heavily and, and it would have been right. fine right up to the edge. What I did here was I quilted uh, an all over meander, mm -hmm. stipple, whatever you call it. So with the overall meander, I can try to have the meander join in. So when I meander the border, once it's added on, I can come and bring a little lobe overlapping that seam and you won't necessarily notice it. Okay, I get that. All right. So now what? 
So now I'm going to trim this right down to that quarter of an inch seam allowance. What I'm not going to do is to trim the top and bottom because that's going to become the side of my quilt when I add it on. When I turn it on to, when I put it onto the little foot well, frame, okay. I like to have that little extra on the side to attach right. it to the frame. Right. Okay. So I'm not going to trim the top and bottom. I'm only going to trim the seams that I'm going to mm -hmm. sew. Mm -hmm. Can I have okay. a ruler? I, yeah, I'll give you a ruler. Thank here. you so yes. much. All right, I bet you want a rotary cutter too. I do. What I'm going to do here, you know, just like you're squaring up your quilt, I can either line up a quarter inch. See, I, if I were trimming, I can trim with that quarter inch, but I'm going to leave it flush with the edge. And Okay, so th you're going to cut right off or you're going to add a quarter inch? I'm going to cut right off. There's no adding. So I can actually use this line here, the, the seam line of my border, to keep me straight. What a good idea. Well, it really depends on what your quilt piecing is like, but I can usually find an inner piece to help okay. me cut this straight, and I'm going to keep that perfectly straight. Okay. And cut that off on, on the left side, on the right side, and then we're going to piece in new backing, batting, and border. So where we're sitting, you're holding the rotary cutter. Are you going to cut this for me? Well, are you right or left-handed? I'm right-handed, so this is going to be really difficult the way we're sitting right here. Right. Would you like to hold the ruler? The buddy system. The buddy system. <laughs> Since we are talking about the little buddy today, we are working the buddy system. Doing the buddy system. So I'm going to go ahead, and this is what we want to do, is just cut that. Oh, look how good that is. And there, we pull that away. Was that, oh, I kind of fudged a little bit there. Now, this might feel scary that you're cutting an unfinished quilt. You know, Especially and you the backing, you just cut it I off. I just cut it off. Uh, you may need to lie down in a darkened room to recover after this point, but it's going to be get okay. Get a good, strong drink. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice drink of water, a bit yeah. of a nap. Go to your happy place. So, rather than doing this all on camera, you this is what we're going to do. We're just going to trim that so it's completely flat. On both sides. On both sides. And then this is your inner... Section of section. the quilt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll go. We'll go ahead and do that, and we'll be right back. Okay, we've got it all cut off. Now tell me what you've got here. Uh, so I have uh, the batting, the backing, and the border. I don't need the backing now, so you can get rid of that for okay, me. Okay, I can put this aside. I'll just put it behind you. Okay, thank you. So I have I a cushy chair. For later. I have a cushy chair. Yes. Uh, now, whenever you work with this, quilted fabric can actually be a little smaller than unquilted fabric. Okay, that, so oh, if this were just bringing a lot of variables into this. Well, you're going to experience a lot of variables. Okay. I just want you to be prepared for it. So this is pretty loosely quilted. It won't have shrunk up much. But my border is cut to measurement, and then I added a quarter inch on each side. Okay. Um, I typically do that just because I want to be able to straighten it when I'm mm -hmm. done. So what I'm going to do is find the center of my border and apply it to the center of my quilt. And I'm a block counter here, so I think I have to count up one, two, three, four blocks. Double check. It's always good to have a buddy. And then you need a pin. And I need a pin. Hold on. I'll get the pin cushion Thank there for you. you. So I'm just going to leave that hang out for a second. And I'm going to pin this in. And you can tell it's not very tightly quilted because it fits. Pretty close. Pretty well. Right. I, I left a half, uh, a quarter inch. Mm -hmm. And there's two quarters of an inch. There's a half inch left. So I really only have two make that fit. So I'm leaving that quor a quarter inch on the outside okay, because I on. cut it that way. So even though you do have an extra inch, you're going to kind of stretch it in. I'm going to have to fit it in, especially if it's a pieced border because you don't want, uh, you, if it's pieced to match, if these are different blocks, right. you, you're not going to be able to take that in. Right. You're just going to have to make it fit. So you can see there's a, a little extra. Quarter inch is not hard to work in. Quarter inch is not hard to work in. Okay. Oh, look, that was easy. So I'm pinning pretty sparingly right now. I'm going to add more pins in a bit. And then we'll work this side. Work on this side. 
I'll put that You'll a quarter put my quarter inch. inch. Absolutely. I can eyeball that quarter inch. As quilters, we've trained our eye to see that so quarter of an inch. There's my quarter inch. Looks great. We're good. Remember when we used to sew with five eighths of an inch? Yeah, that's not so as easy to eyeball, is it? No. So this is all uh, fitting in place now. And these are pretty far apart on the pins. What I'm gonna do is take my backing now. And I have a nice straight edge on the backing. Do you notice it's not the same size as the border? So I think this is a six and a half inch border and probably a 12 inch piece of backing okay. because I want that extra fabric to attach it to the frame whenever right. I put it on the, right. on the little foot. So I'm gonna take my straight edge here. And you've cut that the exact? It's not exact. I okay. cut it extra long. Okay, uh, so you just... Because I wanna make sure I have fabric on my new left and my new right, okay. so I, I want it longer. Okay. So I'm gonna pin this on. So you're pinning the right sides together. Right sides together. It's just like piecing, except one of the pieces is a quilt. Yes. <laughs> so you can see why I could start out with my with my pins further apart. Because now I'm gonna pin through all the layers. Okay. Okay. Very exciting. I am totally intrigued with this. It's well, like, this, oh is, this is a break. You quilt the quilt, then you get to sit down and do a little piecing, and then go back and quilt the quilt some more. So you're not gonna piece this on your long arm? No, I'm piecing this on a home sewing machine. And here That's I have some, why we have it here. I have some big pins, so I'm gonna pull them down out of, this, out of the stitch path so I won't stitch over them. And so we did, on this one, we did not center this and measure it out. You're just laying it out and... I know there's plenty. This is an extra wide backing, so okay. I know it's really, really long. Um, if it's a concern, I would cut it exactly the same size to make sure that there's no gathering or puckering right. in the back. Okay. Because the thing that's going to gather is actually the your backing. Right. I am, I'm giving fabric. it a bit of a tug every time I pull okay. it. Okay. All right. Because Good remember how little, uh, there was only a quarter inch extra mm -hmm. in here. So as long as I don't have it gapping, see, I'm pulling it so that it's a right. little tighter when I pin it. Okay. It, it should work. Because this is not going to give as much because of the, the, the all the layers. Mm -hmm. All right. Just about Gotta done. Got to get through all of those what ifs. And I've probably experienced most of those what ifs. <laughs> and <laughs> when, oh, there's a, there's a little pucker back there. That is a great place for the label. Uh, Label's not gonna go right in the lower corner. It doesn't it's gonna be, go up wow, in the- Wow, I really like that you put that label right in the middle. What made you do that? It looked like a good place. Yeah. There's a pucker under it. There you go. But they don't need to know they that. Don't, they do not need to know that. Okay, just about done here. And like you said, you have plenty of extra fabric. I have fabric. plenty of extra. It's one of those 108 inch. Wide fabrics. Yeah, it's an extra wide fabric. Fabric. It's so right. pretty. Okay. Now, you would do the same thing to the other side. I would side do the same thing to the other point. side. Yeah. Boy, I'm really puzzled here. So I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna follow your lead. Okay. So I'm gonna set these aside. Okay. And then I'm going to I usually use a walking foot at this point. Um, I stitch this with a quarter inch stitch yes. on a walking foot and sew all the way down. So we'll take care of that mm -hmm. and then we'll be right back. Okay, okay you have sewn this on, so yes. you've got your I have top. My, my border. And your backing. And my backing. And now there's a really important thing missing here. What? The batting. I need to add the batting in. How do you do that? Well, before I do that, I just want to reiterate that I stitched uh, I stitched that together using the walking foot because I have so many layers and different thicknesses um, that I wanted my even feed foot, my walking foot on my okay. machine so that whenever I pieced it, um, all the layers fed through evenly without putting any puckers. Yeah. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm going to leave that walking foot on. I've 
changed the thread. I actually put a thinner thread in there. So I have a I have a cone here of bottom line. It's just a thinner thread in the top and bobbin. So the thinner, a 60 weight. 60 weight, 80 weight, something like that. Okay. And, and the, why? Because there's a lot going on in that seam right now. Um, I have two backings. I have a batting, and I have two no, layers wait. of top. Oh, yeah, you do, do yeah, you have two backings because you have on that seam. Inside that seam, I just sewed. There are already two backings, a batting, and two tops. So there's a lot in that one right. seam. Right. Um, so I am going to now stitch in that seam again. And I want to make sure I use a thinner thread so that you don't give any thread buildup in there. Just It's the one thing I okay. can control. Right. Okay. So I have my batting, and I have it cut, and it's cut nice and straight. It's not a scissor cut. It's cut nice and straight so that it'll, it will blend right in. And like I said, this is about 12, 12 and a half inches so that it, I have more than I'm going to need. Okay. And I have set my machine to a, a zigzag, but it's a, it's a three stitch zigzag. I call it a lingerie stitch. Okay. From when I was doing so garment construction, it goes stitch, 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 stitch. Um, and that way, it still gives you that zigzag. It still gives you a zigzag, but it distributes that thread bulk. Okay. And sometimes when you do a wide zigzag, it actually gathers it in for oh, you. Right. Right. So that stitch, um, which is actually on this machine, the, the, stitch. the stitch 710 has this machine, has that that lingerie stitch right. on it. Um, and I do that to distribute the bulk of the thread and keep from puckering the seam. Okay. And so on this machine, if we lift this lid, go ahead and lift that. It's stitch number 13. Okay. Uh, and I I can leave it set at the at the factory preset. It's uh, let's see, thirteen. It's going to be five millimeter wide and a and a one millimeter stitch. That's probably okay. I'll okay. adjust as I get going. Okay. Okay. All right. Now what? So I don't I don't pin any of this. This I uh, you, you can. I don't. So I'm butting these up right next to each other. And I start in just. So they're not going to overlap at all. They're not going to overlap. We don't need any more thickness. There's a lot going on in this one bulk. seam allowance. So I start in a good half of an inch because when you sew batting, it likes to suck in. Right. Um, and what I might do to start, here I'm sewing, and I'm going to sew backwards first. So I sewed my first half okay. inch backwards. Then I'm going to come in that half inch again and sew the rest forward. So it's just going and connecting those. And so, I'm actually going to take it to the seven millimeter, which is the full width. It okay. doesn't go any wider than that. This, that's the nice thing about this machine. It does have a little wider than some of your other machines. Uh, this is such a great tip. If you have lots of pieces of batting and you need to use it up, this is this exactly is how I sew them it together. together. Mm -hmm. I use a thin thread on the top, a thin thread in the bobbin. Okay. I use the lingerie stitch and just piece all of my battings together. Um, I but the key to that is what you said earlier, is they need to be straight, not a scissor cut, mm -hmm. but straight so that they work together. And I also don't do this on high loft battings, like a wool batting or a puff batting. More of your cotton batting. I do it on my cotton or my cotton um, my bonded polyesters. Okay. No, nothing fluffy because whatever you do is going oh, to make yeah. your batting nice and thick and a and dip in the middle. Compressed. So any regular bat, any regular batting that doesn't have loft. Good idea. Okay. So you're going to go and do that whole thing on both sides. Right. Okay. We'll be right back after she's done. So now we're going to put this on the frame, and before you use the little buddy with the poles. And the leaders. The leaders, but you're telling me you're not going to use that now, but right. you're still going to use the little foot. Correct. System. Okay. What's great is once you put the little buddy on, you don't have to take it back off. You can use the little foot or the little buddy at the same time. So nice. Isn't it? So we only have to reposition this once, so two different positions across the yes. top, and then turn the quilt upside down in two different positions across the bottom. When and we're you done. say why two different positions? Because you can only quilt the left half and then the right because half. Because it's too long. It's too wide for the frame. So again, this is how it was quilted this way. We're turning it 90 degrees, mm -hmm. and we're just doing the borders, which mm -hmm. is really one throat space. Right. For no, this one. It may be one. more for others. Right. Okay. And it's much simpler, because whenever you're doing, if I, if I piece this entire quilt at once, 
and I layered it all at once and I quilted it all at once, I would have to have a lot of fullness sitting up on top mm -hmm. of, of my regular which little foot can. bar, which totally works. But now we avoid that. Most of the bulk of the quilt is now hanging down below the frame. So we don't have to manage where is it going to sit up here and how mm -hmm. am I going to hold it. So this is like a great big embroidery hoop. We're just going to hoop it Exactly. On. Okay, let's do it. And this is why I left the extra fabric at the top and bottom because I wanted the extra batting and backing to be available. Gives me something to clamp on. So are we going to hoop? Do you start over here with your hooping? Uh, you can start at the right or the left. It doesn't matter you because have to, where are you going to start? I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start. Well, let's start on your side then. Because don't you normally start on the left when you start stitching? I do. So I'm just. Well, you, then you start. Oh, okay. So there's two mentalities here. You can load this over the top. Excuse me. You can load this over the top and you can clamp it on, making sure your clamp is oriented so that it l lays flat. Or, Debbie, show us another way. Well, you're saying first we can put it over the top? Right, okay. like that. I haven't done that before. What I normally do is I go under the bar here. And then that just automatically gives you that level fabric. It gives me the fabric. level fabric. Okay, and that's what I'm gonna do too. Okay. But we need to make sure that we're underneath our hopping foot. Come on, underneath the hopping foot, over, and giving you enough space to start on this side. Correct. And enough to stitch at the top. Yeah, that's why I left the backing and batting larger than the extra border, to give me enough to clamp it to the frame. Right, okay, so I got that. Is it, nope, I didn't get mine tight enough. Sorry, we're gonna get it. Act like I haven't done this before. And I'm going to use all my little clamps up here. Okay. okay. I'll move the machine out of the there. way for you. And then you have a big one for the front. Now I've noticed that you've not got it going uh, straight. I can fix that. But it doesn't really matter. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> Does it matter? It doesn't for this because I'm not doing a pantograph. I'm not doing a, a groovy board. I'm not using the Pro Stitcher. Actually, with the Pro Stitcher, I could fix that. Right. Uh, but because it's going to be free motion quilted, it doesn't really matter because I, as long as the needle is going to be able to make contact with the end of my border, it doesn't matter at all. Okay. Um, the big clamps. I love the big clamps. Super clamp. The, thank you. Uh, and I like putting it on from the end and pushing it in position. And unlike these clamps, which I put up and down, I put this one sideways. So I saw, yes, I saw you put it on and then you swiveled it. So that totally leveled, gave you that level. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can take one more for down there. And I'm gonna take one more for the right side here. And then again, swivel that. Remember, swivel that. We want it to and be nice and flat. look how flat that is. And whenever I go to quilt, I might, as I do my meandering, I'm gonna come over uh, over the border okay. seam mm -hmm. to make it look like it's one continuous pattern. Okay, so uh, what about this? Because this is loose. Uh, I can either spray baste it down, pin baste it down, thread baste it down, but what I'm really going to do is come and stitch across the top. It's, it's a small enough piece of fabric that I don't, it doesn't Just bother me that it's not basted. Up and across there. Up and across. Okay. And the one thing that I'm noticing here, and I didn't really plan for it, whenever I quilted the center of my, of my quilt on the little buddy, I basted down the edges. And right here at the very end, I have a little bit of a basting stitch showing there. And that's why I moved the machine to four stitches to the inch whenever I do my basting. Right. Because I can just pick those stitches out. Okay. Um, they're not going to matter. Um, so right. I, they'll, they'll show up whenever I put the border on. And if there's any extra, I'll just take my a little seamer Brit in there and pick out five okay. or six stitches. All right. And the rest of it stays. Oh, my. Now, and then? Oh, go ahead. Well, I think this works great with the little buddy and the little foot frame. But do you think this could work on another machine? On another frame? Not another frame, but on a, a Sweet 16. I was or a capri, sta stationary. a stationary machine. Yes. If you have a really big quilt and don't want a piece, right, and quilt that whole quilt at once and have all of Get that bulk, center. you can piece and quilt the center part mm -hmm. and then add another part, right. and then add, an, add and another part. And you just part. do that part and do the other part, and across. that keeps all of the bulk where you want it, so you don't have to start with the entire quilt right. while you're working in the middle. Right. 
That's a good idea. So it kind of gives you ends to work on. Okay. So we've talked about this, and we've kind of gone back and forth, but I'm still going to bring it up. Uh, what if I have a small room, and I can put an eight-foot frame, a studio frame, because that's all I have, but I would every once in a while like to do those large quilts. Now, the sewing on will be exactly the same. The way you're piecing it and sewing it on, you're going to make it fit in that center part. The concern I have is because it has multiple rollers, whenever you uh, have this, long, this piece that's longer than your frame, right. you, you can't pin it, it to can't. the rollers because it's longer. But you brought up... You can get super clamps the super clamp and the easy grasp clamp and do the very same technique on your eight foot frame to get that really long quilt when you turn it. Because these clamps fit the studio frame as well. And we have clamps that fit the gallery, gallery frame. frame as well. So if if you ever set your you know your machine up at six, eight, even ten and you have a larger quilt than that and you want to do this technique as long as you use that multi-pole frame as uh, the multi-pole as, a hooping, as a hooping system. Right. And so the pole that you would hoop, you could bring it up, I guess, and hoop it on your top. I would just put it here. On the idler pole. Mm -hmm. And it would work. It totally would work. So it's a really good technique, no matter what frame, if you have a small frame. Or a, or a stationary machine. Or a stationary machine. So our Capri, our Sweet 16, Totally. If you don't want to manage that great big quilt all the way through, you do the body of it, the center. What did you call that? The I do the, the center section, and then mm -hmm. I, add, I add one side, then I add another. So most of the quilt is going to, to be where I want it, and I'm not managing right. all of the bulk right. at once. And, and you can turn it so that you don't have it all in your lap either, exactly. so it'll be up in the throat space. Exactly. It just takes the bulk away and saves it for later. I love it. I think it's such a good idea to do that. And if if you wanted to even do some, um, I was going to say some some stitch in the ditch, you could do that here or do it. I would probably do it here. I like stitch in the ditch on the frames, right? Uh, because I find it easier. But this doesn't have to be just with a meandering. It can be if it's custom quilted. So this could be custom quilted, or I could have ended here and now do the custom quilting here. Totally. I just did a really simple uh, meander for the sample. And when the quilt's finished, no one is ever going to know that that was done in three pieces or four no. or whatever it takes. No. And I can quilt a big quilt on my little frame. Genius. I know. Ah. <laughs> You are so amazing. Thank you, Debbie, for You're joining very us welcome. today. This has been so enlightening. I mean, when I first started this and she's telling me everything, I'm thinking, what, what? But then the light went on. I'm going, I get it because you have taken advantage of using the little buddy and the little foot. Thank you, Debbie, for joining us today. This has been so fun. Thank you for joining us, too. Come back next month for another HQ Live, and don't forget to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel and get notifications when we have a new uh, HQ Live. See you next time.